Hi, kitty cats. Do you feel uncomfortable talking to transgender people? Do you fear anything you say will offend us and instead choose to remain silent when you could understand us? Transgender people are, well, people. But discussion today about who we are reduces us to a caricature, shrieking about pronouns and public toilets. It's not a surprise when I hear people tell me they don't even know how to begin the conversation about gender, let alone the impact of gender transition. To be sure, pronouns are important, and whether I'm AP in public contributes to my quality of life. But the highest barrier to open conversation about being transgender is how it is portrayed in the media. Exploring gender identity and challenging social norms is described as a pathology, a sickness, an aberration of human behavior that threatens the existence of the entire human species. And while politicians rely on this fear to get your vote, the problem begins with Western medicine's focus on mitigating symptoms as opposed to overall health and quality of life. In poor attempts to explain being transgender, medical professionals, politicians, and religious officials claim I have a disorder, a fetish, multiple personalities, autogynephilia, anything, other than simply ask me what I experience. I'm left out of the discussion as the person who must be healed or fixed. I am judged unqualified to evaluate my own reasoning because my illness apparently fogs my vision of the normal human experience. And as a result, I am othered, I am feared, I am shouted down. And people who just want to know the truth, maybe you, will never learn what motivates me and how it is the normal human experience of looking inside myself and making what I value real in my life. You explored identity and gender just as I did. I came to different conclusions, but we went through the same process. You can understand me, but misinformation about my experience prevents us from communicating openly and honestly. Medical insurance requires a billing code for a pathology if we are to receive health care today. I can't just go to a psychologist and talk about how I feel. I must first be labeled with gender identity disorder or its new designation, gender dysphoria. I can't just ask for the hormone therapy that has clearly improved the function of my body and mind, as well as given me hope for a future. I must first label my health, my joy, my hope as a pathology. What makes me joyous and hopeful is apparently what makes me sick. And while new labels attempt to diminish the use of disorder to describe me, my normal human experience of just being who I am still carries a stigma. We must be able to discuss the human experience if we are to understand each other. Mental health is not a zero-sum game. Calling me sick does not make you healthy. All it does is prevent us from living in harmony. And let's ask ourselves seriously, why do our governments and organized religions want to ensure we don't live in peace with each other? So let's talk in the comments below. Do you have questions about the transgender experience? Do you wonder why the medical profession, politicians, and religious officials cannot speak intelligently about gender? Then like this video and subscribe to my channel for more gender education from a human perspective. Bye!